and gentlemen, welcome back to the first part of this, hopefully, 18-part series, if I can get on to all the content producers. We're joined by Stu from the Flag Mantle podcast, um, a real, real solid podcast if you are one of the manic purple side of Western Australia. And there are a bunch of great guys as well. I have some good banter with them on the uh, old Twitter. How are you, my friend? Mate, I'm I'm really really good. Um, just came back from recording our podcast, actually our season wrap up. Um, so it's a sad day, you know. Footy's you know going in the back corner for a few months, but look, I'm happy to be here and talk about my boys. Hey, well, I mean, obviously, last year for you guys, it I, I'd say maybe for some ex- exceeded expectations. You were fifth on the ladder. You got all the way to the semis. Just. With it all settled now, how do you feel about last year? Um, I think last year was a bit of... Um, we, we sort of climbed the ladder a bit quickly for my liking. I, I kind of like the slow, gradual progression um, of, of football teams because I think it's the list like builds together. Um, and I don't really like seeing teams just jump like Collingwood have done this year. Um, I think they're, they're going to be in for a shocker shocker year next year the pies so i think we could be in for a bit of a drop next year i'm i'm a little bit worried and concerned but look it, it was fun 2022 was fun um optimistic for next year but um i hope we don't drop away well i mean i i always look at Fremantle, and they're one of them teams that you know that i, I think it's because i've got an affinity with purple i don't mind watching you guys play and uh You've always had some great, since I've been here, there's some staples that I like watching. And obviously, I think the big off-season story was, obviously, you saw said goodbye to some massive heroes. David Mundy, how did you personally feel about seeing the end of probably an iconic player? Yeah, that was that was really emotional. Um, David Mundy's one of these guys. Um, is, is this phenomenon in sports that I love. It's these guys that you can just pigeonhole down for 10, 15 years and every week they're there. Um, and so you sort of build up a connection with them. Uh, if you watch wrestling, I liken him to The Undertaker because he's there at WrestleMania yeah. every year. Um, so it, it was really emotional to see David Mundy go. I'm glad he kicked a goal in his last game against the Pies, but it's a shame we never won a flag with him. So, yeah. It's heartbreaking, but I mean, he was, I mean, as a Carlton fan, I can say he's hes a legend of the game. And it's going to be weird this year seeing you round one without seeing Monday in that 22. It's one of them guarantees when you look at your team sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's hes just sort of a lock every year, uh, round one starter. Uh, doesn't miss games with injuries very often, which is why he got... Uh, to 360 something games it was incredible really he's just there every week and he's consistent he's consistently in our best group of players every every game let alone every year he's he's a phenomenal servant of the club and uh i mean yeah it's it's heartbreaking i mean they've all got to retire haven't they even like the undertaker yeah. they they all have to <laughs> eventually leave and we have a new wave and that's the story of Fremantle, really, isn't it? Your new wave of midfielders. You've got a lot of young guys, um, a lot of up-and-comers. What was your expectation as a fan as the season settled? You had the semi-final. What were you hoping to see in the trade and draft period? Uh, bring in some experience. Uh, we, we lost a few. Uh, Logue, Akers. I mean, you guys are going to love Akers, I reckon. Um, he's, he's a good pickup, but losing him hurts a little bit. Um, there was Roy Lobb, which I'm thankful we got rid of, um, and Darcy Tucker and Lloyd Meek as well. So we needed some depth and some experience. And we, we got one in the draft in Wagner. Uh, it should come in and be a good depth piece, but we're still really young. It's rare you see young teams be this good. So uh, we just need to mature, really. We just need to get bigger bodies. So. And obviously, you, you started to get some of them bigger bodies in Yeager O'Meara, which was kind of like the surprise of that trade period. Like, his name was maybe banded around he might leave, but most people thought with Hawks wouldn't get rid of everyone who was uh, over 21, which they seem to do. What did you think of Jaeger? Because he's one who I think is exciting. If he can stay fit with a little bit of responsibility, I think he could be a really good player for Fremantle. Well, he was a former number one pick back in his day. 
um, served the Suns quite well. And of course, the Hawks, not much success there, but has been a pretty good player. It's whether his body can hold up. He's had, he's had some injuries the past few years. Um, it's just whether he can string together 15, 20 games in a, in a year. We know what he can bring to the table. Um, be an experienced old head for our young guys in the midfield. Uh, be consistent because a lot, a lot of our youngsters aren't going to be consistent week in, week out. Um, but with Jaeger, I think that's what you get. So as long as he stays, you know, out the medical room and on the field, we'll, we'll be good to go. And obviously the biggest, you were the talk of the trade period because you guys launched the big, big off-season move for uh, Big Jackson to come back. Luke Jackson arrived. And how did you guys feel about that? We Did you think you paid too much? Were you worried about paying too much? Are, are you happy to have him? Because you have got Darcy, who in my opinion, I keep talking about him. I think he's going to break the gone Grundy stranglehold. I think he is going to be the next big Ruckman in the AFL. How did you feel about that? Well, it made draft day very boring. So um, a little bit upset about that. But no, I think we paid the right pi price for Jackson. I think he's a generational talent. Uh, the way David Walls was talking about him, he's going to play him key forward, rock midfield. Like, you know, you, you don't get many of these types of players. And especially he's had a few years development already at Melbourne and won a flag and it's been taught by Max Gone. So Look, he, he's come from a really good team and he knows how to win a flag and he's already three, four years ahead of who we would have drafted anyway. And I think he slots right into a premiership window quite nicely. He, he, I think he's a really exciting... I, I heard the same interview as well. Like They, they really rate Jackson. And I, I, I'm really excited because I know when I looked at your trade period, I thought, I think they're a key forward shot. And you brought in Corbett, who could be anything he i mean he could be one of them players that we've seen it in the afl he, he's not really a superstar but then he changes his club and he suddenly becomes a superstar but i actually think that jackson up forward could be actually the smoky for Fremantle that people aren't expecting yeah well i really hope so um i think we're gonna end up being really tall next year at forward if he does play forward um which is a bit of concern but luke jackson he can pick up the ball better than some smalls, you know, he's, he's got really good groundwork. Uh, he's really competitive. I think he could be our key forward for the next 10 years with Jai Amos. I, I, I agree. I, I think he's, he's got something about him. And when I watched him at Melbourne, people do talk about his rook work, but I always thought he was that dangerous, that dangerous guy who rests in the forward line. He, he's a bit like Rowan Marshall when Rowan Marshall for St. Kilda rests in the forward line. He, he suddenly kicks two goals and you're like, how did that happen? Um, mm. I think he might be just that little rabbit in the hole. And I actually think Melbourne will regret that trade in five, six years' time. I think that might, they might think, God, we maybe should have charged a bit more. Yeah, well, I think looking back on it, we might have ended up paying unders, which is crazy to say. Two first-round picks in a second is, is a lot for a player. But, you know, if we look back in five, six, seven years and Jackson's turn into what Frio think he could be, um, this is a huge deal for Fremantle. This is not just Luke Jackson. This is the next superstar. This is the next big thing. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing him. And obviously, he's got the roots. He's got the he's got the connection as well. So it's always great to see that. And I don't think you've had like a superstar really in that forward half since like Pavlich. And he could become a Folktown hero. I've got a feeling he, he seems to love you guys. He was super excited. When you saw him get off that plane, he was genuinely excited to be coming to Fremantle. Yeah, well, it's good to see players actually want to be there, um, which has been a bit of a problem for Fremantle in years past. I mean, we've tried Jesse Hogan, Cam McCarthy, Shane Kirsten, um, you know, Harley Bennell's been around. Uh, you know, our team has just had a bunch of these players that don't really want to be here. So to get someone in with the ilk of Luke Jackson that is a lock away for the next 10 years is is really exciting as a free fan. And moving into the draft, you touched on it. Obviously, you guys weren't super active in the draft because obviously you brought in Jackson. But I really liked your draft period. I didn't think, I, I thought you got a few players that were probably really nailed on Fremantle picks. What were you expecting in the draft? And how did you, were you happy with what you ended up recruiting? Um, today, I'm happy. Uh, at the time, I was a little bit, shaky on them oh i've never heard this bloke's name before 
Um, and this is a year I've been really into the draft. So to hear these guys' names read out that I hadn't heard of um, was a bit of a shock. But now in hindsight, you know, after doing some research, I'm I'm pretty happy with what we did. Uh, lack of WA talent, which I think could be a problem in the years to come. Uh, we got Hugh Davies with our first pick, key defender, definitely a need. I've been seeing a lot of Frio fans saying we don't need another defender, like Griffin Logue didn't just leave. So um, we we need some more key defenders. I think Hugh Davies is going to be that for us. Got a young developing Ruckman in Noble. He's massive, massive tall bloke. Um, got some experience in with Wagner and Emmett. Emmett has a really interesting story. If you haven't heard it, I'd recommend anyone uh, researches it. He had cancer at 16 and now he's on an AFL list. So he's he's a resilient one as well. Wagner, this is his third club. So I think this draft really points to the direction of where Fremantle are going. These guys are sort of older, more experienced bodies. Fremantle clearly are in the premiership window or the next few years will be. Um, so I, th- I think it's a smart draft. I don't think any of these guys are going to come out and win a Brownlow or a Coleman, but I think this is plugging uh, plugging holes at the moment. Yeah, I mean, on the the Wagner one, I, I did a little preview of him just at the end of the trade, per- end of the trade period and was like, he deserves a second chance. Saw a lot of him, of him in the VFL. And um, I mentioned someone like North, um, someone with a young list that probably wants kind of that guy to come in who understands the system, who understands what it takes, and almost like kind of a fatherly figure. I I never thought of Fremantle, but it makes more sense the more I see it. I think that's a wonderful influence to have around the dressing room, someone who's obviously been effectively sacked twice. So he knows how, if you don't take, if you take it for granted, you don't last very long. And he's worked incredibly hard last year to get even an opportunity. I think that's a great story for your young guys at the club that this guy here has shown it and not always fulfilled it. And he's worked hard three times to get a chance, which can only help at the training track. Oh yeah, a hundred percent agree. And we've got a few guys like that. Um, Fremantle have sort of built their forward line out of taking mature age players like that, like Banfield, uh, one of best and fairest is a mid here and got picked up in his twenties. Lucky Schultz, mature age. Uh, Swickowski played at Box Hill for like three years before it got picked up. Um, so it's a lot of guys like um, like Wagner. And I think it really builds character within your group. I think that's what we saw from Fremantle this year. And I think this just adds to it. It's character, really, above all. And I do love the Tom Emmett pick. Um, big South Australian boy. He's, uh, He's much loved out in Norwood, and he gives me Schultz vibes. Every time we play Fremantle, Schultz is one of them players that annoys me because he's just such a thug. He, he's so <laughs> hard for your halfbacks to get any drive, and Emmett's of that mould, and I really like that pickup because I think it makes you horrible to play, and that's what you guys really, I think, need to pride yourselves on a little bit. Yeah, well, I think we should sort of return to the, Fremantle of old, the Ross Lyon era when we were good, that team was a nightmare to match up against. So I think Emmett is just another one of these guys that's glass half full, going to work until his, you know, until he falls over. Um, and he's he's a pressure for he's a big guy for a pressure forward. Like he's solid. So you don't want to get tackled by him. Um, hopefully he can get some games next year um, under his belt. I mean he's he turned twenty one yesterday as of recording. So good little birthday present for him so yeah hopefully he's well received by the boys he's a he's a good character and i do love max noble like you said you touched on it the guy is a giant and uh um i saw a lot of him play in my draft previews we talked about noble as someone who hadn't been talked about really but he's got really good rook craft it's just really refining the other things but as a ruckman he's very good He's got some good kids to learn off, though, hasn't he, uh, Fremantle? I mean, Darcy, I think he's probably... It's a scary thought for AFL fans if he can learn that dirtiness that Darcy has because he is huge. He, like, scary big is Max Noble. Yeah, well, Sanderlands is still a rock coach, so we're, we're pretty sorted in that, um, in that department. So I think Noble should... Um, look, he's going to take a few years. He's still skinny. 
Um, obviously, as you said, uh, apart from his ruck craft, he's got a lot of development ahead of him. But Luke Jackson's about as skilled a ruck as anyone. Um, we've got Tavener, who's a really skilled player on his feet as well. So he'll learn from some other big guys. And he'll hopefully he fills out within the next few years as well, um, just so he's not getting injured all the time, because that's the worry with the young kids. Oh, spot on. And I mean, Sanderlands probably wasn't the most skillful player, mm. but it was his size. And I think if Max Noble can learn off Sandy, it, he could be quite the talent for Fremantle. Yeah, well, same with Darcy. He's not exactly um, one-touch player, 30 disposals, but he just, like, flattens guys. And his rut craft is pretty good, and uh, he's upped his cardio as well, so he's able to cover the ground a bit more. So... Hopefully Noble, um, or it rubs off on Noble a little bit, and he becomes this well-rounded ruckman uh, that just has great ruck craft. Now, is there anything that in the draft you wished we'd picked up? So, like, at the end of the season now, is there anyone you're thinking, I wish we'd filled that hole? Well, Sam Gilby was the one I really wanted. He went completely undrafted. He was supposed to go in the top 30, 40, and I penciled him in as, you know, a lock away for Fremantle's first pick. I went, oh, okay, another halfback that can push through the midfielder later in his career. Um, I I love Sam Gilby, and I can't believe he's not on a, on an AFL list. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. Another one's Jasper Scaife, um, great young bloke, pretty shy. Uh, we had him on the podcast a few weeks ago, um, and he's, he's lovely, um, but he's really – he needs to be more confident, you know? I – his, his play is there. It might be his confidence that's holding him back a little bit. He's really reserved. He broke his foot playing um, volleyball at school lunchtime. Um, so that probably didn't help. But he's another key forward that's just a big guy that can take a mark and kick a goal. Um, sad that he's not on the list. I think we also need another X-Factor small forward. Like I look throughout the league and I think Tom Papley, I think Tyson Stengel, Toby Green, none of our small forwards are going to break into that echelon um well i don't think anyway uh so i think maybe taking a chance on a small forward could have been a move it's one of them things isn't it as it, it, it's always hard and you've just got to back sometimes your list management i mean i've been a Cowton fan for far too long to see some players that we should have taken um i know we were linked with stengel at one stage last season and th that's one that always kills me when i see him at geelong and see him banging goals and i'm thinking why <laughs> why but yeah. um moving into 2023 what are the expectations for you where, where do you see Fremantle if we do this video this time next year uh well hopefully we win another final uh my expectations are probably lower than the rest of uh the fan base I think everyone else is shooting for a prelim I'm just take it easy win another final make sure we're in it to win it there's going to be a lot of good teams next year like richmond and port are coming back up and st kilda as well and carlton and there's going to be so many teams so i think just winning another final is probably the aim point i want to see some development from our younger guys as well maybe amos plays half the year um something like that uh where we can just lock away another young guy for the next 10 years so yeah not too high just maintain where we're at we're still young. Consistency is the key, isn't it? Really, if you, I mean, mm -hmm. just get these experience into these because, like you say, your core it is scarily young, and it's. I don't yeah. think it's talked about enough in the AFL. Yeah, look, we're all we're all really young, especially with Mundy leaving. He bumped up our average age by about ten years. So, um, look, we've we've got Brayshaw, who's probably our next captain in waiting, and he's still 22, 23. So. Um, we've got Sarong and Brody and Darcy still young. Jackson's coming. We've got so many young players um, that if we're not consistently within finals the next five, ten years, I'm honestly going to be disappointed. Um, but next year's not the year. It's not the year we're going to win a flag. Um, 2023 is not it, but we just need to maintain the trajectory that we're on. Well, I mean, Fremantle, I think they are, I, I think they are coming. I, I, I said it, I think, last year in my prediction that us and Fremantle with the two teams that I think potentially are on the brink of a dynasty, where mm -hmm. these two could be the sides that are competing heavily for the next eight to ten years. And I also hate to do it, but I include Collingwood in that category. I think that a lot of people are forgetting that the young players behind these old players are developing quite nice in VFL. But thank you so much for joining us. Where can our lovely members, because we've got some members from all around 
the mm-hmm. AFL community. Where can we check you out? Um, so our podcast is exclusively on Spotify right now, but we're working on fixing that. Um, so just type up Flag Metal Podcast right there in Spotify. We've got an Instagram as well. Um, if you search Flag Metal Podcast on Instagram, it'll come up there and Twitter too. Um, next year is going to be big for us. We're expanding into the video creation a bit like you um, and Blues Abroad and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, expect to see us on YouTube and TikTok and more video content next year. Honestly, everyone, go and check them out. They're a great bunch of guys and uh, they're really welcoming. So, I mean, it's a bit, bit unlike the Cow- the Collingwood <laughs> podcast. We have to deal with that. Give us a bit of abuse. The, uh, the Fremantle boys are a bit nicer, so... Go check them out. Thank you so much. I wish you the best for 2023 because we're not in the season yet. And um, hope to catch up with you sometime in the year and uh, do another video. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me.